Hello again. In the last year or so, we've seen a number of statues toppled from their plinths. This has happened in uh, Britain, the United States and Canada. They were pulled down because they commemorated supposedly uh, people with unacceptable views about colonialism. The latest of these was, of course, um, a statue of Queen Victoria in Canada. All is not lost, though, because these old monuments depicting unpleasant people are being replaced with new ones, which remind us of more pleasing aspects of British colonialism, perhaps. Take the statue of John Chilembwe of Nyasaland, which will be set up in Trafalgar Square next year. In the description to this video, I give a link to a news story about this, and the thumbnail to this video shows us John Chilembwe, who was a black African. It's to be hoped that this will prove to be less controversial than the bronze image of Edward Colston, which stood in Bristol until a mob pulled it down and threw it in the harbour last year. Perhaps we might look at John Chilembwe, about whom I'm prepared to take oath few viewers will ever have heard. Chilembwe was a black African from Nyasa land, which is uh, known today as Malawi. He was born in 1871, and as a young man was taken to America by missionaries where he was educated and became a Baptist minister of rather a strange kind. After he returned to Nyasaland, he started a church of his own and his religious activities were combined with political intrigue and at the outbreak of the First World War in 1914, he entered into negotiations with German forces in Tanganyika and tried to get them to invade Nyasaland and install him as ruler of the territory. This not unnaturally annoyed the British when they heard of it, coming as it did during a war against Germany. Chilembwe's actions were viewed as sedition, verging on treason and plans were laid to deport him. When he found that the Germans would not help him, John Chilembwe launched a revolt of his own, aided by other African churches. On the night of Saturday, January the 23rd, 1915, some of his men attacked estates managed by English and Scottish settlers. They had been instructed by John Chilembwe to bring back the heads of white people. A number of white men were killed, and one, William Jervis Livingstone, was decapitated with an axe in front of his wife and children, and his head carried off as a trophy. The following morning, which was a Sunday, John Chilembwe preached a sermon at the Church of Mbomwe with Livingstone's head next to him, stuck on a pole. Yes, you heard that correctly. The man to whom the statue will soon be standing in Trafalgar Square gave a speech to his followers with the head of a white man stuck up on a pole at his side. One or two questions spring to mind here. Was this man more virtuous and worthy of having a statue erected to him than a wealthy philanthropist like Edward Colston? Would we be having a statue in Trafalgar Square of a white man who had given a speech next to a pole with a black man's head stuck on it? Actually, of course, nobody would tolerate a statue being set up in London to a white man these days at all. You really can't imagine a statue appearing in Trafalgar Square tomorrow to Sir John Smith or General Brown. John Chilembwe, though, is not only a black man, he also has a pleasingly exotic name. The minor detail about people having their heads chopped off at his instigation may, because of this, be overlooked. The truth is, only white people are held to rigorous standards of behaviour, even centuries after their death. 
Black Africans are as a matter of routine exculpated for any savagery and their actions justified in retrospect by the fact that they lived under colonial rule. As white statues fall in Britain, they are likely to be replaced by images of people of colour, whose crimes we are all expected to overlook. 